Hey guys, Clack of the Geek here. Welcome back to a brand new video. And today, I'm going to be doing another list video. I'm going to be doing my top 10 Doctor Who stories of all time. So it's going to have stuff from the classic series, stuff from the new series. I'm just going to be talking about my favourite ever Doctor Who stories. So, let's get on with the countdown. At number 10, I've got Remember to the Daleks. A story I've talked about before on the channel, but in summary, it's a really clever script which really brings the Daleks back to their Nazi-inspired route to the racial purity stuff. You've got some really high-stakes action with a lot of practical effects, which look brilliant for the classic series. And it's got some really iconic moments, whether that be Ace beating up Daleks with baseball bats, or quieter moments like the Doctor's speech about how every decision creates ripples. You know, this story is just perfect, I think. <laughs> Number 9, The Enemy of the World. Up until 2013, this is a previously missing story. However, now we can see it, we all consider it as Doctor Who done as a Bond film with its action set pieces, spy thriller sort of tone, and political intrigue, which isn't in your face. It's also notable having Patrick Trout playing two roles, the Doctor and the villainous dictator Salamander, with that sick Mexican accent. There's so much nuance to Troughton's performance, because when he's playing the Doctor pretending to be Salamander, it's different from when he's playing Salamander. It just goes to show how much of a great actor he is, and it's got some great twists and turns throughout, which really just prove that seeing it is believing, and it raises the hope that more missing episodes will be found. <laughs> Number 8, Midnight. I've talked about that story before, but I genuinely think this is one of the scariest Doctor Who stories ever. It's so claustrophobic, it's so contained, but very tense, gripping, and when the characters that you really care about start turning on each other, it's really horrible. And then the Doctor gets visibly, visibly scared, and that just emphasises the tension. And it is really well done horror, and it is brilliantly written as one of the budget-saving episodes. It is a brilliant one. <laughs> Number seven, I've got the 50th anniversary special, The Dare the Doctor. This story is just so much fun. I just, and that's sometimes all you need for to make a good Doctor Who story, or well, a great one. Uh, you, you know, you've got the Zygons coming back, Tom Baker having a cameo, Pete Bowley having a cameo, all 13 Doctors saving Gallifrey, and then you've got John Hurt as the Doctor. That is just dream cast in there. John Hurt. Oh, um, it's just dream casting, that is. It's just amazing. And I genuinely think that this is a very fun story. The Time War looks epic. It's it's so cinematic. And it is just so much fun. And you can have a really good time with this. And sometimes that's all you need. <laughs> Number six, I've got Earthshock. I think this is a magnificent story. For my favourite villains, the Cybermen. It also introduced my favourite design of the Cybermen. Because I love these designs. And it's just really well done. The build up in part one is very good. And then from there, from the epic cliffhanger part one when they're revealed, the rest of the story is just great with some really fast-paced action, nice space under siege field, the, it starts to get really claustrophobic, you feel like this time they're not proper taking over. And then the bit at the end when Adric, the companion, dies, it is very impactful and really shows that the show has stakes and consequences, as that and what is we need from Doctor Who. <laughs> At number five, I've got Vincent and the Doctor. One of the most emotional episodes of Doctor You've got touching on the story about Vincent van Gogh. And it's a very clear metaphor for depression. But it's not banging you on the head. Um, and it's done subtly with like the invisible monster being some of that. Showing that you know you can't just wave so much screwdriver and oh look depression is you know gone. You know it's very touching but it's done perfectly. Not only by the writing, but the actors, Matt Smith and Karen Gillan, are on top form in the story. And I mean, that scene at the end in the art gallery, when they show Vincent his life's work, and Bill Nye gives that fantastic speech. It's just a gut punch. It, it, it really is. It's just brilliant stuff. <laughs> so, Battle of Part of the Ways, Chris Freckleston's swan song and the series one finale. And what a way to go out. All the elements from series one culminate to make this climactic, action-packed finale great. You know, you've got the Daleks gunning down anyone like their tissue paper, even Captain Jack. I mean, they just, it's just, a, it just shows how they're brute force. The Dalek Emperor is also very ominous in the story, very booming presence. The Doctor is so heroic in the story. 
and the regeneration scene at the end is brilliant. It's very hopeful and it's done in a way that wouldn't have probably alienated viewers back then. Although you've got the game show references in the story, which are a bit dated now, and the Rose X Manica at the end, I can let some of those slide because the game show references, well, it was made in um, the 2000s, and the X Machina thing, it does have a consequence on the Doctor, so I can let it slide. But overall, this is just magnificent. <laughs> At number three, we have another regeneration story, The Cage on Zoni, the swan song to the fifth Doctor, and what a way to go out. You know, considering Pete Davidson's Doctor is one of the kindest, more human Doctors, seeing him thrown in this terrible situation, and he has no other choice but to just get out of it, and it will cost him a regeneration, is just so heroic, and the fact that he sacrificed himself for his companion is just so well done. Uh, considering everyone else in the story is on, like, is not on their side. You know, they're in a mob where or just for out evil. So that really raises the tension and the stakes and the desperation for them. I also think the regeneration scene is so good. You know, the bit building up to it when the doctor's carrying Perry throughout the TARDIS to the TARDIS in all the explosions, it's just so heroic. And then the doctor's regeneration is very psychedelic, very psychological, and then the master shows up in his vision and then regenerates into Colin he's like, change my dear, I haven't seen you in a moment too soon. What a great way to end the fifth Doctor Zero, which was was not the best, but this is what it should have been for the majority of his tenure. Oh, what a classic. Genesis of the Daleks is just incredible. In fact, on the DVD, it even has a sticker saying it was voted the number one Doctor Who story. It shows the origins of the Daleks and how these people just had to mutate into these horrible creatures. It's so well done. It's also the introduction of one of Doctor Who's biggest villains, Dalros. And the scenes between him and the Doctor are just utter perfection. And then the Doctor's speech about, do I have the right... It's just so well done, and it really brings up the big message of the story about can could you kill the Daleks if you're in that situation? It's just so well done. And at number one, my favourite Doctor Who story, The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. This story, I have absolutely nothing wrong with the other stories. I might have slight nitpicks with, but this story is just perfect. Stephen Moffat crafts this fantastic script with a fantastic setting of World War Two. Uh, and a monster with a cat trail that's almost as scary as Exterminate. It's also the introduction of Captain Jack Harkness, who is a fan favourite character for, for obvious reasons. And there are some fantastic moments with Christopher Eccleston. Whether that be the quieter moments, the comedic moments, or the sheer heroic moments, such as his Everybody Lives speech at the end. Honestly, this story is just a masterpiece and is essential viewing. So that's it from me, everyone. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Hope you enjoy the video. And this is Clack of the Geek, signing out. Ta-ra!